Cat here. Today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating on how to make a uh, kalam phun. It's a northern Thai dish, um, northern Laos, from northern Laos. We like to eat this dish with a um, tomato broth, tomato tamarind broth with a spicy pepper fermented bean sauce. Uh, this dish is actually a, an acquired dish, so if you never had it, you might not like it. But if you're familiar with it, this is how to make this dish. Um, I made a video on this before, but I think it was a little too complicated on that video. So hopefully today's video will be a lot more easier and simpler to follow. Okay, so okay, let's start making that KLF. Okay, so what I have here is some rice flour and tapioca flour. You're going to need about half a cup, one and a half cup rice flour and one third cup tapioca flour. You can use any brand, but I prefer this brand by the three-headed elephant. Uh, Erwin, I think it's called it, the Erin Erin brand. Okay, so get the red bag for the rice flour and the blue bag like this for the tapioca flour, okay? And also what you'll be needing is some limestone paste, okay? This limestone paste comes in a jar like this, and this is what it looks like inside. It's just a chalky, white, pasty paste. So what you want to do is you grab like a, a tablespoon of this paste and then put it into about two cups of water. You want to dissolve it and mix up all the paste, the limestone paste, until it looks like this. Okay? Okay, so what we're going to add to our flour is about six cups of water. That's two. Just warm, look warm water. Four. Six. Okay, and then you want to whisk this or mix this thoroughly. Okay, once it's thoroughly mixed, okay, you want to go ahead and add two tablespoons of the um, limestone water. Now, some people like to just use, um, they like to mix the limestone and let the limestone rest to the bottom and just use only the clear uh, water from the top. But I like to mix mine up because it's more stronger concentrated that way. So you don't have to do it this way if you don't, but you can use the clear, clear top of the water or just do like I do. Just take two tablespoons, mix it up. Okay, add it to our, okay, and then mix it up. And then this is ready for microwave. Now the reason why we use the limestone is so that it helps thicken up the uh, flour. Some people swear that they don't use it and it still works, but I've never done it that way because I've always done it this way with the limestone. Okay, so now we're just gonna put over there where my microwave is and I'm gonna put this up. So I punch it for 20 minutes, and what we're gonna do, the trick is, you guys, when you make it in the microwave um, versus the stove, that you gotta catch it before it hardens up. So you wanna catch it um, where you could stir it up, uh, otherwise if you don't catch it in time and it hardens up, then that batch is kind of ruined. So that's the trick. The trick is to kind of watch it, let it cook. I'm gonna let it cook for about three minutes, and then after three minutes, I'm gonna bring it out, I'm gonna stir it, okay? Okay, so that's been in there for about three minutes. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna stir it. You gotta do this several times. Bring it out and just stir, just so there's no clumps. And then we're gonna put it back. continue cooking for another three minutes or so three to four minutes um, I they did not reset the time I just hit pause so that's how you know um, how long it takes usually it takes about 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> okay so while that's cooking let me tell you a little bit about what you do with the rest of your um, limestone water 
okay? This is still uh, good for the next use, a couple uses. So just, what, what you wanna do is just find a jar, a glass jar, and just uh, pour this in there and just close it up and leave it in room temperature until you need it again next time, okay? So that's what you do with the lunch. Okay, we're gonna check it again. It was in there for another four minutes, so see what it looks like now. See, that's, that's the trick. The trick is to catch it before it gets too thick. You want to catch it. See how it consistency? Ah, my lighting is bad right now, time of the day. But, oh, let's see. See, it's a little bit starting to get clumpy. You want to catch it and stir it. Whisk it real good so there's no clumps. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting to thicken a little bit already. So the next important part is to catch it before it completely hardens. Because you want to catch it enough where you can still stir it and mix it. Okay, and it goes again. That's maybe two to three minutes, okay? Okay, check it again. Oh, this is exactly what I mean. You really have to try and catch it before it gets really too hard to stir. See, this is perfect. This is a perfect time to catch it. Any more than this in there before you stir it, it's gonna get hard and clumpy. So this is the time you can go ahead and mix it so it doesn't get clumpy, okay? See how it is? If you didn't catch it right before this, or after this, it's gonna to be too hard to stir or mix. And then it, all it's gonna do is just gonna be all clumpy and hard like a brick. So this is good. And depending how soft or hard you like your KLF, you could either add more water or leave it as it. If you leave it as this, it's gonna be a little bit harder. I'm gonna add another cup because I like mine to be soft. And then you just want to unclump this and make sure it's smooth. Because you don't want clumpy kung fu and you want it smooth and silky. So I've got to use an elbow piece here. Okay. Just like this. And then we just let this cook for the duration of the time remaining. Ooh, hot, hot. Don't do this. <laughs> okay. And we just let it microwave for the rest of the minutes remaining. Okay, so why that's um, cooking? I just want to let you know that um, use a micro safe, microwave safe bowl. You don't want to use a bowl that's not microwave safe, okay? So I bought I bought this um, from, uh, this brand is this, it's American made brand. It's micro, microwave safe and it's plastic, but it works great for um, making column food in the microwave. Either that or you can use a, uh, the Pyrex glass bowl. Those are a little bit more, um, to me, a little bit more uh, fragile because it gets hot and you might drop it, it might break, you know. So use use one of these. These are the best kind of bowls to get is by American made microwave safe bowls, okay? And while that's cooking, you wanna use a big enough bowl to make your KLF. If you're gonna make a big batch, you want a big bowl, like this red one. It's a big one and that's a medium sized one I have going on right now. 
Um, if you have a small bowl, keep uh, watch it. You gotta keep an eye on it because it tends to, when it's finishing cooking, it tends to bubble up and then if it bubbles up, it's gonna spill over into your microwave and that's gonna be a, a domestic clean. So that's happened to me a couple of times. So keep that in mind um, to keep an eye on it. Um, when you know that it's bubbling up, if you're using a small bowl, if you don't have a big bowl, is just stop the, uh, the time and then bring it out and stir it and then that will help make it go down and then you can finish um, cooking it that way, okay? Okay, so the timer on the microwave says I have about five minutes left. I'm gonna stop it and show to you what it looks like so far. This is what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna stir it up. This is what it looks like so far. Done. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop it. Careful, it's very hot. So this is done. I'm going to give it a good, nice Whisk here till it's smooth. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a plate here and make some of the hard ones. So go ahead and do this. If you want to eat it the cube style, just pour it into a bowl or a plate like I am doing. And then you want to let this one Rest and harden for, it'll take about a couple hours, maybe two to three hours until it's ready to eat. Or you can do it overnight and the next morning it'll be ready. So just like that. And we just leave this out. And for the rest, if you want to eat it right away, what I like to do is make it into blobs or use a um, potato ricer to make the noodle, noodle style, noodle version. Okay, but I'm not going to do the noodle. I'm, I want the blobs. Today, so let me show how you make the blobs. Spoon. Okay. Let's see. What I have here is cold water. Um, if you have ice, add ice. That would be nice. I don't have any ice today, so I can't use that. But cold water is fine. So just take a spoonful and then just drop it to the water. So they're like blobs. This way, you can eat them right away. You don't have to wait two hours for that um, to harden. Just like that. Okay, so this is what we call kale of blobs. They just look like this. Just let it sit in that cold water for maybe five, ten minutes, and then you can eat it. Okay. Okay, so while this is cooling down for a bit, 
gonna show you how to prepare it, how to eat it. So what you need is this. This is the KLF sauce. This is the fermented bean paste pepper sauce. Um, it's a stinky sauce, that's what it looks like. I have a recipe on how to make this, so I'll leave the link below the video, okay, how to make the sauce. And you will need the broth. This is a tomato and tamarind broth. So basically you just boil some tomatoes, uh, add some tamarind powder, add some salt, some MSG in this if you like, and this, that's it, that's just the sauce for it. And this is what it looks like once this hardens the next day or in a couple of hours, okay? This is what it's gonna look like, like this. It'll harden up like this. Okay, and then you just cut them into cubes versus blobs, okay? It's basically the same thing, but you get to eat the blobs right away where you would have to wait for this to harden first, okay? So I'm gonna eat the blobs. Make a bowl. So this is a cold dish. It's a rice cake cold dish. Look at my blobs. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> you can make it as big or as little as you like the blobs. Okay. I'm going to add our juice, our broth. The best tomato for this is the um, cherry tomatoes if you have them. But any tomato will work. Okay, that. Little or a lot, depending how spicy you like your kalung food or KLF. I always like to add a little bit more MSG because I like that umami taste. Oops, like that. Top it off with some cilantro and fresh mint. You don't have to, mint is optional. Most people don't add mint to theirs, but I, I find it, it's very refreshing and I like it. So I like to add mint in mine and some fresh cilantro. And this is optional as well, roasted peanuts. Most people don't know you could do that, but it adds a really good texture to it and crunch, creamy, peanut buttery. And voila, this is the emergency KLF. You can eat it right away after it's done. You don't have to wait for it to harden. My mouth is already salivating. <laughs> mm. This is a perfect um, alternative for something spicy and sour besides papaya salad that we all love. This is perfect. If you have no higher taste for this, of course. Mm. And that's it guys, that's how you make microwave KLF. I hope you will give this a try and I hope it turns out for you. Thanks for watching, bye.